For more on the legal side of this issue, I want to bring in Misty Maris now, legal analyst and trial attorney. Misty, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. What a terrible story. Yeah, Misty, Just first so of emotional. all, I want to ask, what is your quick reaction to Talia Smith's story? It is it is such uh, just a heart wrenching story and to see her and hear her speak about her active lifestyle and the care she gave her husband before and now because of this antibiotic, which is a very, very common antibiotic. She's in a completely different position in her life. But Natasha, it's important to note she's getting this story out there. She's bringing public awareness. Mm -hmm. In addition to her story, there are lawsuits relating to this classification of drugs and failure to warn cases across the country. Mm -hmm. So it is a wide uh, spanning issue. I want to ask legally, I mean, I want to go through the vectors of liability here because there are so many parties that touch this medication. Uh, do Talia and patients like her have a case against the pharmaceutical company or are they protected by the black box warning? And then what about the doctor or then the pharmacist who actually gave it to her? Who is at fault here? Natasha, all great questions. So uh, as you said, the pharmaceutical has the warning, the black box warning that they've put out there, they put it on the box. The black box warning is there to advise patients that this type of drug has these side effects. So as you said, it's not that there's a 0% case against the manufacturer, but they do have a safeguard there from a liability perspective. But then all the way through the chain of getting this, uh, this medication from a doctor to the pharmacist, to the patient, anyone involved in that chain mm. could potentially have liability. And a lot of these cases have exposed failures at hospitals to have procedures and protocols relating to uh, giving these warnings to the patients. And it's something that's been um, that's been a part of these litigations as they've cropped up around the country as this drug is prescribed so frequently. Yeah, watching Talia Smith's case, um, you know, for, and seeing what you've seen, we asked her if she's planning legal action. She is not sure at this time. Do you think she has a strong case? Uh, that she could bring forward here? Yes, so the, the legal theory is what's called failure to warn. And so based on what uh, what I've seen and not knowing every single fact, there is liability relating to that. And there are viable causes of action relating to the failure to warn of a side effect of a prescription drug. And that liability could be anywhere from the doctor to the hospital uh, and, and all the way down that chain. It could also be, I, I know part of her story is that once she did experience side effects, that those side effects weren't addressed uh, expeditiously. So to the extent there are any issues there about what was diagnosed and what care was given, that's also the source of a potential cause of action against a medical institution. Yeah, and I know since we've spoken with her last night, so many viewers have been commenting and saying, you know, not only are they so shocked about this, but concerned for themselves as well. And as patients, we appreciate you helping us clarify this. Misty Maris, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.